Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Don't Kill the Messenger with your host Victor Vento from Vento Bot. Now today I have a special guest, Ruth Wilson, and she's going to be diving into how to boldly create a signature group program so that you can very efficiently and quickly bring people in and get them started so you don't, so you can move away from the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that's the kind of like the time suck that happens with that. So she really helps people design and boldly lead group coaching programs and really helps to identify that signature program to, to add to it so that they can effortlessly increase and scale um, at will. So now before we we begin head on over to ventobot.com forward slash book to get your free copy of the complete automation strategy the four phases we use to generate never-ending leads because how are you gonna fill a group coaching program if you don't have people to fill it so I welcome in my guest today Ruth Wilson and we're gonna get jump right in hey Ruth how you doing I'm good Victor thank you so much for having me awesome yeah no I I'm excited to talk about this topic because I know um, a lot of like coaches, high impact coaches and, and consultants, they work, they do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great place to start because it really helps you identify your initial program and how you help people. It really helps like work out all of the specific tweaks. But then I, I feel like you get to this point of you start to get, say the same thing over and over to a lot of the same people as you, as you bring new people on and your recurring clients. So I feel like at that point, people are like, how do I get out of this like one-on-one -on -one trap, right? And then they look mm -hmm. for someone like you to really help them to map that whole thing out. So what, what would you say is kind of like the first step when someone is, for example, in, in, that, in that stage of like, I, I need a group program. What makes us need a group program? All right, great. So like what really helps us to like, okay, so what would I say is that the first thing to start with is like you as a person, because for you, and I talk about bold leadership when it comes to a group coaching program, because like, you're not going one-on-one -on -one anymore. This is group. This requires another level of confidence for you, another level of like leadership. So it starts with you and like having your intention set, like, you know what? I'm intentional about more impact. I'm intentional about freeing up my time so that it's the same amount of time that I take to work with one client, I could be working with a few, right? right. I have yeah. to be intentional about like wanting to scale my income. Like it helps you to bring in more revenue into your business. So it's just setting the intention and making the commitment. You know what? This is what I need to do and let me make that step. It's just a decision, yeah. right? Because a lot of people procrastinate because they don't believe that it's possible for them. They look and they see others are doing it. It's like, oh, they're getting through with good coaching program. Like they can't really see themselves doing it, you know? So the, having yeah. that intention and believe that it's possible for you and be willing to reach out and get the help if you're stuck and how course. to do so. So how would you say they, they actually overcome that belief? Because I, I, I've been there in the past before where, for example, um, when we were doing a lot, when we were just starting, we were really in this phase of like, like, man, how do those people, how are they making like the six figures? That was, was before I was, we're at that stage, right? How are they making the six figures? How are they doing that? And now it's like, well, it, it, it's, there's, you're like, well, from what I'm hearing, there is a different level that is required of you um, as you move mm -hmm. up. Uh, but like, how do people overcome that like mindset of like, I, everyone else can do it, but I can't. Yeah. So referring back to like bold leadership, like if you want to lead in a more bold way as in group, you have to be willing to bleed yourself. Right. Uh -huh. um, okay. Yeah. Definitely like believing in your ability because if you're able to make an impact in like one-on-one, -on -one, like just look back at like how far you've come the impact you've made thus far and like you are just tipping the highest bar like you're just um seeing a small part of your potential yeah right and if you know like and i think another thing is like trying to take the attention away from ourselves not let's focus on ourselves too much but focus on who we want to impact like right? um the reason for showing up in a greater way to reach more person like you have to know like do you have a message to share your story and all of that? Is it, that has to really drive you to really overcome like all your personal insecurities, like 
how am I going to serve everybody in a group? Like, and this is like with the intentions, like, and I want to say like, why a group too? Um, so you have to know, like, what is the reason you want the group growth, but the group coaching program for like, right? Yep. right. So, um, for some persons, it's like, um, having the time freedom to be with their family more. Right. Yeah. So that becomes their motivation or um, they want to build out a course. So like instead of like building out the entire course and then bringing people in to figure out if they're going to buy it, you actually uh, offer to go um, group coach people and build out your program that way. So like a lot of people like waste a lot of time in that. So like knowing like what do you want, your goal, who you want to serve. Yeah, and like just focus on the impact you want to create. Don't focus too much on yourself. And I know there's a lot of um, mental programming and stuff you have to work on, but um, that's where I talk about like I consider myself a mentor and a strategist because like a mentor helps you in becoming the person that is mm. able to do the work it requires to have um everything that you desire because you can have all these strategies obviously if you have all these strategies uh oh it looks like we you got muted there but um i from what you were saying it, de it definitely makes a lot of sense right um so because it does like you said it does require a different level of us it, it does require a different form of competence because it's not just us doing it one-on-one -on -one anymore but it's us making sure that the entire group is under the same understanding and that we we follow up with them we're bold we're bold enough to pull them out of when they get stuck for example um i've run a couple of, of group groups before in the past um one mm -hmm. that i'm currently in now that we're running uh to get their next three clients in the next last 30 in the next 30 days is essentially just like some of them get stuck because I, I think what you're saying is just like we get in our own way of um like oh i, I you, you get momentum and then for some reason something happens and you're like oh i got stuck and i don't want to keep going i can't do this as a leader to that group we have to pull them out we pull them out of that one-on-one -on -one, but that's a lot easier to do than when in a group because in a group it's a little bit different they can almost hide in that group so we have to make sure that we're really going in and paying attention and serving to that highest potential i, I love it yeah yes all right so another thing i would like to talk about like when it comes to designing a program um, it starts with like ground zero, like you start, like I'm, I want to go from like scratch, right? Okay. Let's say you have a one-on-one -on -one program and you're, you're okay. You have the intention, desire, all of that. So you go, you're going to go all in. I'm going to get my group coaching program off. Yep. So, um, when first thing that you want to do is definitely, um, doing some research right just making sure that the idea of your program is something that people are looking for they need right mm -hmm. um i recommend some of my clients i recommend like first of all like having free strategy calls to see how people are like what another thing i will reference to like having a signature method by which you help persons with right, right? Yeah. So that kind of comes from your one-on-one -on -one program like we're not saying don't do your one-on-one -on -one program. Um, when you do your group coaching program, that allows you to raise your prices for your one-on-one, -on -one, like persons who want uh, more assistance from you, right? So that, just I want to put that side note there, right? So like yeah. definitely doing the research and seeing what people really want. And you have your signature um, method that you help people with. Probably you already created that for your one-on-one, -on -one, but right, you want to yeah. know like how can I deliver this um, in a group setting and one way to test this is like you can offer like um, a master class a paid master class or a workshop so like it gives you a feel of what it like what it's like to present to a group to deliver value in a group setting that right? makes sense yeah yeah it's just like testing the water it's like if you're like super nervous and you're not sure about like how things will work out doing small mini um, versions of that bigger idea helps a whole lot in boosting your confidence 
and seeing what works and what doesn't. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Cause I mean, um, there is a different, like, like you meant, like we keep going back to it, there is a different complexity, right? So when we, uh, what I found was when I, when I did transition into more groups and started adding that in um, to help people that weren't necessarily ready for our one-on-one, -on -one, but like moving them through that, it gets them the initial results, but there is, like, again, there is, like you mentioned, a little bit more complexity there and understanding how to help them is very important. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. for example, like my message, um, as far as this group goes, right, is it's focused around getting their next three clients in the next 30 days. And so that's very appealing. That could even be very appealing to like a one-on-one -on -one message is just adapted slightly um, to, to uh, essentially the, the group, right? Cause I can do that a lot quicker for my one-on-one -on -one clients, but I have to adjust it because I know that I'm not going to necessarily be doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting, like a one-on-one, -on -one. they're going to be doing it. I'm going to be working them, working with them through that program to get them those mm -hmm. next three clients. So that's definitely one of the biggest things there that I, I feel is, is super, is super valuable, right? Making sure the message adapts from your one-on-one -on -one to your one-to-many. Mm -hmm. And also you want to sell the idea of the group program, like being in a group setting because some people yeah. learn from each other. Some people don't want that. They prefer to learn and grow with other people. So it's great to like sell the, um, the dynamics of what comes out of a group, right? So that's another okay. thing. I, I like that. Cause I mean, we like to learn together. We like to do things as a team as together um, and having other people. And he, I think here's the, here's the, the, the gold nugget there that you were just saying is essentially saying it's, you're not just, you're not the only one doing this. You're not the only one in this position. There are a lot of people in your position. So they're going to do it with you like join us. Mm -hmm. It's not like join me, work with me. It's join us to get that result. Yes. So, and like when you're asking, uh, answering someone's question, like that person there might be going through the same thing. And like, they might someone like, I saw this happen. Like this happens a few times before, like someone was in the group. They were like, have this question, but they were just not bold enough to ask it. And yeah. by another person actually asking that question and that question being answered, that helped that per the other person was not so bold to really ask a particular question. Mm, I, I, that's true. I've actually seen that myself because I, I've seen mm -hmm. it myself to where like in, <laughs> they, have, they have somewhat a direct access to me. So like I had two people ask the same question to me, but privately because they didn't want to show it in the group. And I, and I said on, on one, of our, one of our group calls, I was like, hey, a few of you asked this question. And then I said the question, I answered it. Um, and then I think it, it, like, from a perspective of boldly leading, I, I'm not just answering one-on-one -on -one privately. I'm telling them in the group thing, I'm like, it's okay to ask a question because everyone else might be thinking the same thing, but not want to ask it um, outwardly in the group. And, and I love that. Exactly. It's, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that actually me, like, allowed everyone to, to, to start asking more questions in the actual group instead of just sending me a direct question, which yeah, again, and that, helps everyone. And that helps you to save your time. Like you don't have to go to each and every person <laughs> answering the same question. You have to keep repeating yourself all the time. Like you save yourself some time there and then from their questions, like if you know everybody's asking the same question, you could now record a video and put it in a module in your course and have it there. Mm -hmm. So like when you, especially in the beginning time when you just build out your course, like you don't have videos yet recorded per se, and you just group coaching. Um, when people like when persons are asking a lot of questions, you know, like, okay, if this is an important pillar of content I need to record a video on that allows you to get that done. And so later on, as you launch again or farther down, you move from like more so group coaching to like accountability calls, Q and A accountability call, because you already have the video there that they go, that they go through on their own. And so when I hop on the call, it's just basically answering questions, seeing where they're stuck 
and like getting feedback wins and all of that. Yeah. No, I, I love it because it's true because we're learning as a group. And here, here the thing about it is that someone will ask a question in a group. And I, I think you're, this is what you're kind of getting at is someone will ask a question in the group. Someone else might answer it. It's outside of me. And they might answer it in a way that makes sense to them because I'll answer it as well to add, to add additional feedback. But they'll answer it in a way. And it's like they're all learning from each other. I'm facilitating that whole process. Right? without without the mm -hmm. without the person leading the group they wouldn't they wouldn't have ever had that that aha moment or anything like that yeah that's I definitely true love it. so so what would you say because you said talk about um you said you also help people design like a signature group program what what does that mm -hmm. mean okay it's like in simpler terms it's like what would you call the process by which you help your clients get from point A to point B? Like, what's the bridge you help them? Like, what's that particular unique way that you help your clients to get results? Like, for example, um, it kind of, there are different ways that people could do this. So I don't want people to box themselves that there's one particular way to do it. Yeah. Right? So for me, I created like a signature method and it comes from an acronym because I know exactly what steps I need. Okay, let me make this more simpler. So like how you can actually do is like you know exactly what steps, okay. Let's say an example, give me an example of like a particular client that you will work with. Let me make this practical. Sure, sure. So um, we, in our, in our group program, we have a, a video marketing strategist. Mm -hmm. So they, they use, video yeah, so they use video. Um, they have their signature process. They call it ACE. Um, and I, the, the actual words escape me right now, but I remember it was, um, one of them was like engage for E and I think it was a track for E. I forget what the mm -hmm. C was, but, um, I think it was consume, um, like attract, consume, and then engage or something like that. That that's, that's what, that's what it stood for. Um, but yeah, so that, that was like the signature thing that she had them do with video. Okay, so let's say our, like, there are a bunch of coaches helping with video, right? But she has her own unique methods. Like say, consume, like she knows like I have to take my clients through seven steps or six, seven steps. Mm -hmm. So she knows like for every step I, let me find, how will I describe this step, right? right like what course. happens here? right mm -hmm. and some people do and like every step of the way like what happens here what happens here so they kind of like take a name like if it comes out to a word like she know consume is probably like um what we could receive or see um probably i don't know some words she knows like what sees me like see mean and okay, yeah. like and oh, she knows what that means, and like, and like, they have like, you have to know what that means for you, right? Or right. you could use acronym, or you could use like, um, a, naming it in a way that of a result of what they will achieve. Right. So, um, like in, in my case, the the group program, like the three next three clients in thirty days. Mm -hmm. So there's specific phases um, they have to go through to get to that point, but yes. Yeah, so you could name it as an end result or an acronym for each step that you take them to. Like you find a way to like... Gotcha. Make it the acronym. So like there, that's the two main ways you could do it. That, that makes sense. So I mean like one of the main... A lot of what I talk about falls under these four... One of these four categories. Um, and mm -hmm. I know people that are come to us are usually have trouble with at least two of them. Um, one is like the attract, what this, another is engage, the third is elevate, or the fourth is convert. So they're usually coming to us because they have at least two of those not working correctly. They don't have a way to attract people consistently, or they don't have, a, they don't have something that can consistently converts people, or they don't have ways to elevate people through their services or programs. Or of course, like the last one, engage. They don't have a way to. They have a way to attract somebody, but they don't know how to engage them or or, or anything like that. 
Mm-hmm. Great. So, so like, just like how you actually had like engaged. So and that could be like your signature method. If you turn that into yeah. a word or like that becomes like your signature method. That, and the reason for having a signature method, because it helps you to stand out from all, all the other persons who might be doing something similar like you, you get to increase your price because like, and there's no really competition because you're the only one that is doing this a particular way. Right, you get to create your own rules for your program, like, like how you actually deliver results. You yeah. make your own rules. Mm-hmm. No, and, and that that makes absolute sense because it's like there's a specific way that I that I believe to get results. I, I have a like, you could you could fit me in with a lot of digital marketing agencies, but then that means that mm-hmm. can mean a lot to a lot of people, right? Digital marketing could be SEO, could be. Uh, Google ads could be YouTube ads could be a website builder, you know, like that could be a lot of things, but that's not, none of those things are anything I do, you know? So like there's a specific process that I take people through to, to get those results. And I get that it, it does pay to have a signature method because if you don't, at least in my experience, what happens is people kind of bundle you into this one category and they're like, Oh, well, okay. Maybe one day if I need that, then I'll come to you. And they think mm-hmm. that you do like all these other things and they just start assuming the things that you do as opposed to, like you mentioned, having that end result clear so that they understand. They're like, oh, I need that. That's the result I want. Let's, let's have a further conversation. Yes, for real. All right. So I want to talk a bit about like what does a model of group coaching look like, right? And okay, I talk yeah, about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So um, there are different Okay, so some persons do, um, well, starting out, you want to start with like normal group coaching calls, right? Let's say you don't have no recorded video, nothing is yet. You start with group coaching calls. If it's like weekly group coaching calls, um, you can have other ways to support them. Like if you want, just having a Facebook group, like let's say you don't know a lot about tech, how to create funnels and yeah the online course and all that like starting from simple like from where you are you can have a facebook group and you could have um zoom or i see there are other applications that are going on you can even go live in the group facebook live on the group if you have a facebook group yeah all that so you have a closed private group that everyone is engaging in and you could even have another way it's like having a question thread like a graphic and a particular topic for each topic you could have like a graphic for there like Mm -hmm. a support thread so that people could drop their questions below there right so that kind of prevents you prevents them from like messaging you all the time in messenger or email yeah and when you answer that question there others see that and so yeah. like that prevents them keep coming at you, like yeah. asking the same questions, right? Uh-huh. Good. So um, that's like usually an initial phase. And then after a while, you would start to build out your online course. As I said, like you have your videos, you could keep it there in units or so on, or you could just transfer it to uh, on, oh, you had to do an online course platform or, Right. Um, so like there's a bunch of them, like, but it's, it sounds like the, the, lowest, the lowest tech option is like Facebook group, close Facebook group, mm-hmm. go live there. That way it's just Facebook. There's no like additional tech that you need or anything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starting from like basic stuff. And then you go straight to actually like building out the course itself or your membership site and then you'll start having accountability calls because you already created all the content that you need to take the client from point a to point b you already have the video for each section so now they have to now go through those calls on those videos and when they hop on the calls now every week it's just accountability making sure that they get it done um they actually, uh, if they're stuck, if there's any mindset stuff you have to help them with or anything that encounter, you answer that in that um, accountability call. Even before that call too, you could do like a survey to see like where they're at and where they're struggling so that it gives you another intimate way to um, see what is going on. Because sometimes people don't want to say everything in the group. And another thing I will recommend 
it's like having office hours, like a particular hour that you could actually have them, like they could reach out to you for support or offer like um, one-on-one opportunities. Like if it's just 50 minutes, once a gotcha. month or so. So like, you don't want to lose the intimacy with them, you know? Some, sometimes yeah. they want to connect with you. So those are some different models you can have, like structure. That makes sense. Like, so I, I love it. So have, have um, like group coaching calls, like at least once a week, um, have some accountabilities in there or office hours, and then some type of one-to-one for a way of them, them, them also reaching out to you. And that, that really helps to uh, like create that environment of like, however they want to reach out and, and work with you. They could watch the replays of things. They could go to the office hours. They can schedule their one-on-ones, like the short 15 minutes or 30 minutes or something like you mentioned and go from there. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, another thing too, I will, will want to talk about when it comes to group coaching program is that you don't have to like be in the, business model all the time the love the great thing about group coaching is like you can kind of take yourself out of the delivery of like the calls at a particular yep. point you could have like a facilitator train someone to help facilitate those accountability calls those q a calls interesting so yeah, you can like actually it. step out and like you could work on other streams of income you could work on um level up more programs to upsell those who are in a good coaching program, you could upsell them to other programs, you could start working on that. So that's the beauty of good coaching. Like you obviously you're starting out, you're doing all the coaching, you're doing all the training and all that. Right. But there will come a time like you could step out and that helps with the scaling. Like you don't have to be in the business for it to go on. You already build out your course. Um, you already have somebody facilitating the program and you could be the face of your brand, you're doing the marketing, um, just um, brand awareness and so on, and your program is going on. I, I love that because it, like, if you think about it, when you transition into group, you do have to be there just like you are one-on-one. And this is where I think maybe most people might be like, well, why would I do that if I'm still having to do all the work? Mm-hmm. So here's the difference, right? Just like you mentioned, to kind of really bring it home and to repeat what you said is, when, you, when you're on one-on-one, you're doing a lot of the fulfillment. When you're in group coaching, it's, it's a kind of a mixture of the two. You fulfill by showing up and, and being available. You also have the group do that. However, it's the same amount of effort for a one-on-one client, but there's more people. So let's say, for example, yeah. a one-on-one um, works with you for three months and they pay you, I don't know, uh, let's just do an even $7,500, right? $2,500 a month for those three months for 90 days to work with you. At that point, that's one person. Now, if you had four of those people in that same time frame, you're doing the same amount of time, but you just four times the income that you have coming in because you're helping that, exactly. that many more people, right? And, and then you're what, leveraging your time and your resources. There, exactly. So you're doing that. And what, exactly what you said, to add to that, after that point, you can then bring someone on to take over that time slot for you. Because then you can focus, if you are going to continue doing one-on-one, you're doing it at a much higher level. And your facilitator manages that 90-day program. And you're still making, and now you're not doing the time anymore. You're showing up maybe when you need to and you're still bringing new people into it, but the facilitator's taking care of the group, and that's still four times the income, and you have your time back. So then you can focus, like you said, on larger programs, the next levels, and and things like that to help people even more in a more intimate way. All right, great. So I wanna give like one more tip, um, how to like increase the value of your program. So sometimes person think that they have to do all the teaching, all the coaching, everything. But I wanted to choose a concept of like having an inner circle experts. Let's say um, you're working with person with messenger bot and so on. And there's a particular part that you want your clients to master and like get right. Um, let's say branding. Right. And you know that that's like not your strong point and everything. You can have another expert come into your program 
and do a workshop or tra a training to help with that particular section. And that increases the value of your, um, your program. Your clients get to win because they get to learn more about mastering the overall is like business marketing and all that. But let's say that particular component you want to bring an expert, they get held there. The expert who comes in, they get a uh, like you pay them for like a session, they get a win there, they get to increase their influence and all that and their impact. So that like, is a win win for everybody and you increase the value of your program. I like this group, this idea of inner circles. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. that's so that's great. all I want to leave for now. So there's a lot that I spoke about, but it's just like taking small steps right now and actions to like at least start. It was like outlining what your program want to look like. Just start one thing. It was like just outlining your program and doing some research, like seeing what people really need in a group setting. I, I love it. Awesome. Yeah, no, no, great. Well, thank you so much for all the insights. I know there's a lot more that you can provide and teach everyone. So where can they learn more about you if they, if they want to uh, move further with you? For sure. So uh, you could reach out to me through my group, Facebook group, and it's called Group Coaching for Scaling Coaches. You just search for that in on Facebook and you'll get access to uh, the group. You could ask for an invite and we do weekly live meetups like you Facebook is offering this new feature now that there are these um, chat rooms so you can have you actually have live training or coaching right there on the spot every Wednesday at 7 p.m. EST so and there's a lot of different trainings and all of that inside the group yeah that's fantastic well thank you so much Again, search the group, group coaching. Uh, is that what it is? Group coaching for yeah, scaling group coaching coaches. for scaling coaches. Yeah. Yeah. So search Facebook for group coaching for scaling coaches and join Ruth's group so that you can understand how uh, all the pieces, all the moving pieces to creating your group program so that you can scale even faster at will. Now, uh, thank you again, Ruth, for coming today. I really appreciate it. You provided a lot of gold nuggets there. One of my favorites is definitely the inner circle. Um, of experts and that's something that I may even be adding in to our uh, the way how we do our group services as well later on uh, so thank you so much again and if everyone remember to head on over to group coaching for scaling coaches to learn all of the little secrets and and tidbits that you'll need to do so that you can actually use group coaching to scale even faster and definitely reach out to Ruth so that she's able to give you the insight and give you the answers that you're looking for specifically. Now, if you're looking to generate never ending leads so that you can fill those group programs or bring in more one on one clients and then fill in those group programs, head on over to ventobots.com forward slash book to get your free copy of the complete automation strategy four phases that we use to generate never ending leads. And until next time, I'm Victor with Ventobot. I will see you on another episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.